Today, we will examine short run and long run supply in an industry. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to do two things. First, you should be able to derive the short run and long run industry supply from a set of firm supplies. Second, you should be able to explain the relationship between short run and long run industry supply. To find the short run industry supply, simply add up the supply curves of the individual firms in the market. Let's take the simplest example possible. Suppose that each firm in the industry has the simplest supply curve, S of P equals P. If there is one firm in the market, then the industry supply is just this firm's supply equation, S of P equals P. If there are two firms, then we would add the supply of the first firm to the supply of the second firm, which gives us S of P equals 2P. Uh -huh. If there are 10 firms, the industry supply would be S of P equals 10P. If there are 100 firms, the industry supply would be S of P equals 100P. Adding together the supply curves of different firms to determine the industry supply works the same way even if firms in the market have different supply functions. Note that in the previous examples, the slope of the industry supply curve increased as the number of firms increased. Normally, we do not graph the supply curve, but rather we graph the inverse supply curve. To find the inverse supply curve, simply substitute Q for S of P and then solve the supply function so that it describes price as a function of quantity rather than quantity supplied as a function of price. As you can see, when described using the inverse supply function, the industry supply curve becomes flatter as the number of firms increases. You may recall that in economics, we define the long run to be the time period over which all of a firm's costs become variable. This means that a firm can adjust its fixed assets in a way that maximizes profit. In some cases, maximizing profits may mean minimizing losses by selling off all assets and closing the business. In the long run, we should expect the industry to enter a state of equilibrium. In general, you can think of a state of equilibrium as a state in which nothing is changing. In the case of a competitive market, long-run equilibrium for the industry is defined as a situation in which no firms are, are entering or exiting the market. In order to figure out what conditions will characterize long-run equilibrium, it is useful to think about the problem from a single firm's perspective. Recall that in the long run, if the market price is below the minimum of a firm's average costs, the firm will shut down and exit the industry because it is making negative economic profits. Thus, this must not be the situation that holds in long run industry equilibrium. Similarly, if the market price is greater than the minimum of average costs, then the firm is making positive economic profits. This means that the firm is more than covering its opportunity costs of doing business, and it is doing better by being in this industry than in some alternative industry. These profit opportunities will attract other firms to the industry as well, so this situation does not characterize a long-run equilibrium either. By process of elimination, we have arrived at the condition which characterizes long-run industry equilibrium. If the market price is just equal to the minimum of average costs, then firms are making zero economic profits. At this price, they are just covering all their opportunity costs of doing business, which means they are doing just as well as they could in this industry as in any other industry. Thus, there are no incentives for any firm to enter or leave the industry, which is the condition that we were looking for to characterize long-run equilibrium in the industry. 
By the previous reasoning, in a competitive market, the long-run supply curve will simply be a horizontal line at the market price. This price will be equal to the minimum of average cost of the firms in the industry. Note that it's not unreasonable to assume that all firms in this industry will have a similar cost structure. You should think about what the incentives would be if one firm had a cost structure that was either better or worse than the industry standard. In long-run equilibrium, there will be just enough firms in the market to satisfy consumer demand at a price that generates zero economic profits. Now that we have established how to determine both market demand and industry supply curves, you have the tools to begin analyzing the effects of changes in market conditions on market prices and output in both the short run and the long run. We will begin this analysis next lesson.